So here's a mouse pad extracted from a laptop computer, and of course it looks pretty darn boring because all you can see is just, just gray plastic. But uh, if you were to take the uh, assembly, uh, strip the plastic off of it, you get this very neat looking uh, pattern of uh, traces on the board. Uh, in this uh, teardown video we are going to take a look at touch pads uh, from Synaptics and we're going to reverse engineer them. Okay, so here is uh, the circuit board. It's gold in color because, well, it's, it's gold plated. Uh, you can see uh, a series of diamonds and uh, what's going on there is that there's uh, rows and columns. Uh, basically, I'll just scratch down a, a column here uh, and a row here. And as you might imagine, as a finger passes across this uh, sensor plate, uh, it, it's picked up uh, by these sensors. The, the sensors are these little diamonds of circuit board material and basically they form one side of a capacitor, your body forms the other side of it, uh, and that can be sensed. Let me just zoom in so we can see slightly better details as to what's going on uh, with this assembly, because uh, there's some interesting cost savings going on as well. Uh, one thing the PC industry is really good at is we're driving cost out. Uh, this looks uh, white because uh, it's a via hole and there's a light shining behind it when I took the photograph. Uh, that's a connection back to some sort of integrated circuit which is going to uh, be uh, providing the actual electronics which uh, makes the magic happen. Uh, you can sort of see uh, this pattern here of diamonds. Uh, it widens out essentially as, a, as an electronic trace um, with little skinny connections here. The reason it's big here is it's trying to create as much area as possible and of course uh, that forms uh, a series of uh, rows along the array. Now for the columns it's kind of interesting. The uh, uh, v is there as well, of course. Uh, I'll just circle one here so we can make sure we know what we're looking at. But of course, if you, if you look downwards here, there's a series of diamonds still, but there's no trace because the trace if it went past here it would short out. Now you might think, well, it must be just on the other side of the circuit board, but uh, uh, not so actually. Lots of uh, interesting cost savings always in the personal computer market. And uh, if we open up the patent uh, that's associated with that, uh, you can see that a two layer capacitive touchpad and method of making the same. Uh, that's the title of the uh, the patent. Uh, everything about the personal computer industry is all about uh, cost reduction. And uh, if you scroll, scroll through the patent a bit further, uh, there's a nice little side photograph of a circuit board. Uh, and the idea here is that, of course, you have the, uh, the fiberglass here, and you have the traces here. And of course, that form one uh, side of the, uh, uh, basically, sort of rows. And then uh, that plastic material was embedded with uh, a conductive uh, ink, probably, or some sort of conductive material, uh, and that actually formed the column. So very, very clever. Uh, you see a lot of cleverness in the, in the personal computer industry to drive cost out. Okay, so uh, that's how the touchpad's constructed. Let's uh, take a look at another touchpad and look at the signals that it generates. Uh, I got two touchpads on the go here. They're both from slightly different model of computers, but uh, they uh, basically come from Synaptic, so uh, the concepts are, are carried across. So let's uh, go to the oscilloscope and see what we can see there. Okay, so I've got the uh, touchpad instrumented with uh, two scope pros, one in a row, one in a column, uh, and it's powered on. And uh, you can see there's a negative excursion and a positive excursion. The patent on this particular product talks a lot about uh, trying to um, neutralize things like uh, AC hum and uh, they, they drive a positive and negative trying to get uh, the bias built out of it I guess. Let me just uh, pause this for a moment here and um, we'll look at the waveform. It basically it drives it negative then it's positive and it looks like then once it's finished driving positive it lets go and then basically it tries to compute the amount of capacitance both here uh, and here and from that it determines whether the, there's a finger in the position Okay, this is the uh, other side of one of the touch pads. Uh, there was uh, three integrated circuits of interest. Uh, there's two parts marked from uh, Synaptics. Those are the actual touch pad controllers. And uh, there's a dual op amp from National Semiconductor. Uh, as you see, I've taken two of them off. I've de-encapsulated them. Uh, the large chunk of silicon uh, is one of the Synaptics controllers, and the smaller chunk is, is an op amp. Let's go to the first, the uh, larger silicon, and uh, here is its dive photograph. And uh, uh, it's very typical of a part from about 20 years ago, and uh, we can actually confirm that pretty quickly. If I zoom into the die markings on the corner here, it says Synaptics uh, 1997 to 2000. So about a 20-year-old design. Uh, so it's quite satisfying to look at these sort of process nodes. They're very easily uh, analyzed under an uh, optical microscope. Uh, what you see is a, a huge amount of parallelism. Uh, and if you were to read the patent on this particular device, uh, the big breakthrough they had was that semiconductors were integrated enough that they could basically drive out 
all the signals at the same time. So we're looking at those signals there back with the oscilloscope, but if you promote all of them, all columns, all rows, they're basically all being driven at the same time, and then being analyzed at the same time. So uh, you avoid the problem of a shutter, like where you move the finger downwards, and you're missing a, a moving finger. Basically, you're doing snapshot sampling all at the same time. Um, and then it looks like there's a, a fairly modest amount of uh, processing power. Uh, what else? Uh, some neat things in terms of the year uh, of the uh, silicon was produced. Uh, the company actually shows the um, uh, initials of all the designers. They actually were written down here in one corner of the die. I'm sure if I was to look at the patent, I could start uh, probably uh, putting these initials to the name of the uh, people who were designing it. Uh, of course, confirmation over here of T1004B, uh, which is the silicon that we're looking at today, and uh, the Synaptics logo uh, up in the corner. Uh, Synaptics, as I can tell, is very much still in business uh, producing these uh, particular uh, touchpad controllers. And uh, as always, I'll put this uh, up on my blog. If you think I'd look, take a look at it, you can um, zoom into it. It's quite a large file. And uh, what else do we have here? Well, let's go to the um, other one. Uh, that's a dual uh, op amp from National Semiconductor. Uh, a much smaller device, and uh, I'm not entirely sure why they actually needed a, uh, a dual semiconductor, but uh, a dual op amp, pardon me. Uh, you can see how small the actual uh, uh, op amp function is. Uh, the outer ring here uh, around it is all the I.O. pads, so um, you get this uh, ear, I guess, of um, the I.O. pads swamping the actual size of the transistors, but there's confirmation here in NSC's National Semiconductor uh, 2000 LMC824, which is the uh, part number. Uh, and in here, of course, uh, I believe this has a real CMOS look to it in my mind. Uh, I also put this all pamp up. So uh, there you go. Uh, that was a, a touchpad from a, a laptop computer.